In the last video, we had a look at our first example of using the effect hook. And we learned one important point. The use effect hook is called after every single render. In some cases, applying the effect after every render might create a performance problem. So we need a way to conditionally run an effect from a functional component. Let's take a look at an example to understand how to do that. Again, for the benefit of the viewers with a knowledge of class components, I will first quickly walk through the class component implementation and then we can proceed with the effect hook in functional components. Now for this example, we will continue with the code from the previous video. So we have a class component with a state variable count initialized to zero. In the render function, we have a button and on click of that button, we increment the count value by one. When the value increments, the state changes, which causes the component to re-render and component did update will execute, setting the document title to the updated counter value. Pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to add a text input to this class component, which will accept a name from the user. So start off by creating a state variable called name initialize to an empty string. Next, in the JSX, add an input element whose value is going to be equal to this dot state dot name. And we need to capture the input element value, so let's add an on change handler. So on change event this dot set state name is going to be event.target.value. We basically update the state variable when the text changes. Finally, in component did update, I'm going to add a log statement. Updating document title. Now let's save the file, include it in app.js and head back to the browser. I will also open the browser console. If I click on the button, you can see that we have a log statement and the document title updates. But if I start typing in the name, we still get the log statement updating document title. The count value, however, is still one. So we are basically setting the document title to the same string seven times, which is sort of unnecessary. To optimize this, we can compare the count value before and after the update. And if at all the count value changed, we then conditionally update the title. To achieve that, we include the parameters for component did update, previous props and previous state. Within the body, we check if previous state count is different from current state count and only then update the document title. So a simple if condition. Now if we go back to the browser, click on the button, the title is updated and you can see the log statement. Start typing in a name, the document title is not updated. So we are conditionally updating the title only when the appropriate variable changes. That is, only when the count value changes. Well, now that we know what has to be implemented, let's see how to implement the same with functional components and the use effect hook. I'm going to go back to hook counter onejs and begin by creating a new state variable for the name input element. Const name comma set name is equal to use state empty string. Next we add the input element. Input type is equal to text, value is equal to name and on change we are going to call set name passing in e.target.value. Finally, 
within use effect, I'm going to add a log statement. Use effect, updating document title. Let's save this file, go back to app.js, comment out class counter one and uncomment hook counter one. If we now go back to the browser, I click on the button and you can see that use effect is called to update the title. And when I enter my name, we still are updating the document title. Now this is not optimal. There is no necessity to update the title if it is not even changing between renders. So the question is, how do we tell React to conditionally run use effect only when the count value changes? In class components, we added a check to compare the previous state with the current state and only update if there is a difference. Now this pattern is so common that the React team decided to build this into use effect. For conditionally executing an effect, we pass in a second parameter. This parameter is an array. Within this array, we need to specify either props or state that we need to watch for. Only if those props and state specified in this array were to change, the effect would be executed. For our example, we need the effect to be executed only when the count value changes. So within the array, we include count. If you now save this file and go back to the browser, click on the button and the effect is run. Start typing in a name and you can see that the effect is not run anymore after each render. So this is the point to take away from this second example. In order to conditionally run an effect, specify the second parameter to use effect. The second parameter is the array of values that the effect depends on. If the values don't change between renders, the effect is simply not run. So a good optimization technique to keep in mind. All right, we are two examples down, but we have a few more to go. Let's take a look at the third example in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.